Right, what is happening, people? Welcome back to the Joey Knight podcast. And today, we are talking about Arsenal Football Club. Now, Arsenal are very much a team on the up recently. And after a brilliant, albeit ultimately maybe disappointing season towards the end last year, they have emerged, in most people's opinions, as Manchester City's closest rivals next season. Someone who will be watching Arsenal and anticipating a big season from them, is my guest today. I'm very lucky to be joined by Mr. Joel Bayer. Joel, how's it going, mate? Joe, how you doing, man? You all right? Well, good. Thank you very much for joining me, mate. I appreciate your time. <laughs> Listen, man, it's such an honour to be well above Chelsea. Like, <laughs> honestly, it's a perfect time to get us on uh, to talk Premier League football. But yeah, I'm very happy to be on today. And I just want to say, I've seen your content recently and like I said to you off air, I think it's really good, man. And I've seen a bit of your journey in the last couple of months. And, you know, I, I reached out to you and yeah. I said, quality stuff, man. Something along those lines. And um, and then as soon as you said, I'd love to have you on, I said, you know what? Yeah, let's get the schedule sorted and let's do it. And honestly, your content is just going strength for strength. So you guys watching, please make sure you subscribe to him. He's putting in a lot of graft. And I really respect what he does. So let's get into That's it. That's an endorsement there. Thank you very much, Joel. I appreciate that, mate. No worries. So as an Arsenal fan, yeah. general expectations for next season. Well, people are going to shoot me for saying this because they don't understand what I'm saying here. But And I know they don't already because I've spoken to loads of people. But top four is definitely a priority with the the signings that we've, we've accumulated. So Kai Havertz potentially timber by the time this comes out i don't know uh and also declan rice now the reason why i say top four is because i still don't believe that with those three signings as good as they are i still don't believe that's good enough to top treble team winning manchester city yep you know what i mean like you can wish i don't want to be one of those deluded arsenal fans where sometimes i put on a little bit on the show whatever but i generally don't believe that even with those three signings you're, we're as good as city mm. so i think the next thing there is top four we're in top four i don't know it would be great to get second or whatever that's another discussion but with those signings that's what you're going for so we want to get onto the signings you've you've touched on them there i think declan rice is the most straightforward. It's a no-brainer. You know what Declan Rice possesses. You also know that under the tutelage of Mikel Arteta, he's going to be able to adapt his game and evolve his game. It's been long said, hasn't it, that Declan Rice maybe needs to become a player that we actually see in the final third a little bit more. We see popping up with goals and assists. One thing I would say is that midfield free. We're looking at midfield frees at the minute, yeah? Ooh, say that it, midfield free of it. Rice, Odegaard... And Havertz or possibly Party or... Yeah, Havertz for a minute. Party, Odegaard and Declan Rice. Yeah. Ooh. That's ridiculous. Ooh. Best midfield in the Premier League this coming season? No, because I still feel like Cities are the ones to beat. Mm. But it's definitely up there. I'll tell you who's is underrated. Definitely up there. Newcastle's. Maybe yeah. not even underrated. I don't even think underrated is the right word for that. You look at that. Tonali now coming in. Yeah. And you're going to stick him either side of... Bruno and Joe Linton. Yeah. That's all, a Rolls it's, Royce it's, of a midfield for me. It's all right. It's obviously high energy. Mm. It's good. I'm not saying it's no good, but maybe I'm biased. Yeah. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm Premier League biased more than anything, but I just think to myself, I'm interested to see if Tonali mm. actually does well in the Prem. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. we don't know yet. Like, yeah, it's a good player coming over, but we really don't know. But I know that my guys are Premier League proven. Proven. Do you, you see what I mean? Mm. So that's where the excitement comes from. And you can't deny City because they've just freaking won the treble. Mm. You know, even if Gundogan, Gundogan's going, who are they going to play there? You know, whoever they decide to stick in there, it's going to be quality. Yeah. You see what I mean? So for me, I think they're the, they're the team to be, if anything. I think, what's you lot's going to be now? You'll Enzo. Be now. Enzo. Just Enzo. Well, so far, <laughs> Enzo. Can, can I say though? When Chelsea are at their best, we are a Rolls Royce of a team that come forward with the ball. We're aggressive. We get stuck in. We probably don't play that beautiful style of football, but it works for us. Yeah. Arsenal do play that. And I think Kai Havertz will be good in that system. The question I want to ask you is where do you see him playing? Because surely you're not going to deploy him as a force nine. That's the thing. I'm, I really don't know. Mm. And I know everyone wants us to give some magical answer as if we're the YouTubers who know everything. But I'll be honest with you. It, it the transfers made no sense to me. Now, Look, he's an Arsenal player. I'm going to support him. 
I think he's got talent. But right about now, when you look at our forward situation, we've got Gabriel Jesus as our main striker. Eddie and Ketio, who's the second striker, doesn't matter what anyone says. The guy scored goals last season and he stepped up when Jesus was injured. He got a hundred thousand pound con a week contract, you know, like oh, just a season ago. He's the number two striker. Balogun is our third striker, done really well in France. So we don't really we don't really need a, a full striker because to to be honest with you, Trossard can play that role as well. Yeah. So you're not gonna sit Kai Havertz down for Odegaard. You're not gonna do that. That's a club captain. You're not going to sit him down for for Saka, and he hasn't got the ability to to step over onto the left and do what my man does, uh, Martinelli. Yeah. So it, it's so strange. I I I can only see a rotation. I can only see a there's X amount of minutes played. Arsenal changing their formation or their tactic, and then he comes on. So you don't see him also. dropping deeper and playing and playing well, in the, that the eight Xhaka role. role. Yeah. I just thought, wow. Well, you've got to remember, you've got the different dynamic, though. Because now, like, we're looking back at it and we're going, oh, what, playing what, the Xhaka Dropping drop Declan Rice, then? That's No, 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 like, no. Oh. Rice plays in there, yeah? Yeah. Rice is there, winning the ball, picking it out in the middle of midfield, breaking the play up, and then you're looking at the likes of Odegaard and Havertz. Or do you think that's too attacking? I feel I, I feel, feel like he's something. taking the brakes off and going for it. <laughs> so you're saying playing two number 10s? Yeah, in a way. I'm not saying we can't, because I'm, I'm sure you can. Mm. But again... You're practically saying what I'm saying. Like, you're not sure, but in select in certain games, mm. he's going to switch it up. Yeah. Then maybe they'll, whatever he's doing will work. But if you're talking about like, you're starting 11 every week, mm. I can't sit here and tell you, and go, oh, this is easy. He's going to play here every week and he's going to do that. I could, I can only see him coming off, off, off the bench. I mm. really can. The only thing I'd counter with that is there'd have been a point at the start of last season where we would have never been able to imagine that maybe this season we'd have been seeing Trent playing midfield. There'd have never been a point when we would be able to imagine that John Stones would be pulling oh, strings in a Champions John League Stones, final. Yeah, but I, I, I don't want to say it's a good problem to have because it is, but I don't want to lie and say it's a, you know, it's a good, it's an okay problem to have yeah. because he's a quality player. I just think he's kind of like, he's a nice to have. Mm. I would have rathered we, we secure, um, another centre back for sure, which it looks like we, we, we're going to with Timber, hopefully so. Mm. That's a quality signing or like right back where he kind of play, well, I'll say more right back, but I'll, I'd rather that money got, have gone to a defender or Kaiseido. Mm. You know, I would have, I know you would have to add money on top or whatever it is, but I think if you get Rice and Kaiseido and you get like a defender, yeah, maybe a right back, possibly a centre back, we've already got the, the attackers. You're not really going to, you're not going to go out there and get another striker, are you? Spend another 60, 70, you're just not going to do that. You do that, I think we're closer to City than we are now, despite it being an okay window. I put out a poll the other day on mm. my uh, on my Instagram and I said, with the signing of Declan Rice, where does everyone think Arsenal will finish next season? Now, it's, bear, it's, it's worth bearing in mind that, yeah, because I'm a Chelsea supporter myself, I'm going to have a lot of Chelsea fans on there. But I would say the gauge I get is is it's pretty mixed in terms of who I have. Do you know what the, the majority, I was about to say the vast, it wasn't the vast, but just about, just edged it. Do you know where the majority of people that voted on that poll put Arsenal to finish next season? Third. Fourth. 38% went fourth. It really depends who you're asking. If you ask me where we're going to finish, definitely top four. Mm. I think what these signings have done is like kind of like... I don't want to say secure top four because you still got to get it, but you have no choice but to finish top four. That's a fact. If I had to lock you down right now, finishing position for Arsenal and if slash what do they win next season? Second place. Yep. FA Cup. You'd be happy with second and a cup, wouldn't you? It's a bit of feeling, man, because it would have been 20 years, bro. Mm. 20 years next season without winning the Prem. And if, if you finish strong second... Like the way we finished second this year, it was strong, but it wasn't at the same time. Context is everything. Do you get what I'm coming from? Like, it, classic saying, if you had told me at the end of the season we would have finished second and, you know, X amount of points behind City, I would have beat your hand up. Yeah, cool. But we stumbled against flipping, got smacked up by Brighton. Do you know what I mean? Mm. We dropped points at West Ham. You know, yes, the Liverpool game, okay, cool. We, we 
might might accept that, but it just got. That's the thing that hurts. If you're an Arsenal fan, and listen, I'm I'm far from an Arsenal fan, but the thing that would hurt me as an Arsenal fan is could have lost to Liverpool, could have lost to City, but oh, if City you had have secured them points against Southampton, against West Ham, <sighs> against Nottingham Forest, I'm pretty sure if you beat West Ham, it's hard to pinpoint it, but if you go right, that sack of penalty goes in, you go on to win that game probably by three or four. Yeah, you go on to win that game nicely. You then go into the Southampton game with major momentum and you're winning that game. And the Nottingham Forest game, that's taking care of itself by that point. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, yeah, but you can't really do that, can you? No, there's if buts and maybe all the time. That was too much. Yeah. yeah. Keep it keep it to the <laughs> to the teams. But I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But I say second. Second. In an FA Cup. And to answer your question, would I be happy? I'm a winner, man. Mm. Like, so... It's hard for me to say yes. 